Well, we want to use it to our good. As often as we can. It will take off into many of the subjects of the scriptures. Of, and surely it's the root of our salvation. It says, keep thine heart, thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. That is a very short script. It's a short scripture. But it's very full of meanings. More maybe than we know. That our heart is the storage place in the root of all of our values. And many times we look for help, reason, and causes from places other. But the Lord let us know that out of the heart proceedeth. The adulteries, thefts, lies, out of the heart. Our loves, our hates, the mercy that we may have, the patience, it said all come out the heart. And many times we consult with the mind as to how to get something straightened out or established. But it's right down in the heart. Many times, you know, we get caught up in trying to figure it out. And we say, well, I really didn't mean it. But he said, out of the heart are the issues of life. Put away from thee a flowered mouth. And we know the mouth as an organ or an instrument is not the cause of what we say. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart is how the mouth speaks. So keep thine heart if you want to keep your mouth. If your mouth overflow, if your mouth speaks unadvisedly, it was the abundance of the heart. That's not what we want abundant in our heart. Carnal issues coming up. Put away from thee a flowered mouth and perverse lips. Put far from thee. And then I revert back to the message that Ram was having. About cutting it off. Cutting the tongue off would not stop the meditation of the heart. And he you knoweth our thoughts are far off, so cutting our natural tongue off wouldn't help us much if we're still thinking it. To say we love someone and we don't in the heart, well, we can do all we want to for them, we still don't love them. Put away from thee a forward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Then he said, ponder the pathway, the path of your feet, and let all thy ways be Establish. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. And John said, make straight paths for your feet. Tonight, if we would examine each other, each one would examine their heart situation, they'd find out why they have a problem. Why we may be too fast, too quick, why we behave as our, we do sometimes. Sometimes we just want the preeminence. Sometimes we want to be thought well of. And then we say, well, you're just proud. No, 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 no. I vehemently deny that. But out of the heart. We say things sometimes uh, to throw off on someone and deny that that's the cause. We bring up things, old things from a long time ago that should have been forgotten years ago. And we say, well, I was just uh, happen to think of it. No, you've been meditating about it. 
And there may be some reason, proper reason, that these things come up. If people are stumbling over it, but let us come up and get it out and get it over with. And let us not be a stumbling block. Now, also in this fifth verse of the third chapter, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Why? Because out of the heart are the issues of life. And lean not to thine own understanding. Our own understanding causes us some problems that we don't understand well. But if our heart's right, these things can be covered. Even if we make a mistake when our heart's right, I mean, people I mean, can understand and people I mean, will have patience. If it was a matter of ignorance and not a matter of corruptness in the heart, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. Amen. In all thy ways acknowledge him that he might direct your, tri- your path. Be not wise in thine own eyes, but fear the Lord and depart from evil. The heart. The heart. Stinginess, covetousness, comes from, it's in the heart. And why don't we won't pray about it because it's not necessarily in our mind, but it's in our heart. But sometimes we can recognize that. Don't you know we can recognize what our tendencies are to pray? I go down sometimes and say, Lord, I tell the saints, don't pray about everything but my problem. I say, Lord, so I'm going to pray about my problem. Let me call it out to you. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Well, it's embarrassing to tell the Lord that. Well, you know anyhow. <laughs> and you can get some help. Thank God if you go ahead and admit it. <laughs> Amen. He know it, but he wants us to admit it. If we're having problems as long as we had talked too much or I said too much, I didn't say that right or uh, this and that. Don't you know we need to tell God all about our trouble? Amen. Some people don't tell nobody. won't even admit it to themselves. And trouble mixing up royal, messing up so much. I got trouble? Amen. I want to talk to the Lord about it. In all of our ways, acknowledge Him. In all of our ways. We want to get that heart straightened out? That hatred? That malice? That bad attitude? Acknowledge God. Tell him. Tell him. Who can do anything with the heart anyhow? But God. Oh, we make so many visits to the altar, but we don't ever give up give it up in the heart. Well, they say making trips to the altar will clear the heart. It says surrendering to God. At the altar, maybe. Or wherever. Be not wise, and sometimes we get too much wisdom around in folks' own eyes. In your eyes and your own eyes, there's a good chance that you may miss the mark and find out that your wisdom was not sufficient to operate in the church. In thine own eyes, fear the Lord and depart from evil. And it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance. What kind of substance do you have Do you honor the Lord with? Even from the garden, folks have honored the Lord with their substance. Who was the first ones that offered to the Lord? As far as we know, on record. Cain and Abel. And we're sure they got it from their parents. To worship and to sacrifice to God. And Cain and Abel, they offered up. And ever since then, it's been a great thing to honor the Lord with your substance. And not be covetous, selfish. Amen. And do others as you'd have them do unto you. Honor the Lord. Heart condition will keep us some time from doing that. Right? Amen. Thank God the saints, uh, for the most part, are very, as far as I can see, we don't go around watching what you're doing. But the Lord been watching the basket for a long time. He said, this is the lady, she put in more than anybody. And she was, he was watching the basket. So we want to be blessed, God, watch the basket. The preachers don't have to do that. Amen. You've trusted in the Lord. Thank God then do what you ought to do. And we're not talking about no legal thing either. I'm not talking about no legal tie and all this hardship and stuff you're talking about. I'm not talking about don't. I'm saying that it's walk, voluntary. All of our service is voluntary. All of it. Right? Amen. God don't make nobody do anything that He don't want to make you do. When it comes to love, He don't make you love Him. You don't have to do that. But we, we benefit by obeying God and 
and uh, being God loveth a cheerful giver, the Bible says. All right. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Praise the Lord. All right. Keep thine heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Amen. Our love for one another issues out of the heart. And we can't love one another enough to get along with one another. There's something matter with us. What's issuing out of our hearts? Amen. 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 We can lightly kick one of the brother and the sisters. Well, shame on us. Let's get it right in the heart. Not voluntarily or that we can do it on our own, but we need to take this to God. Amen. Amen. Because he's the manipulator and the cleanser and purifier of the heart. Amen. Paul said, I know, I know that in me dwells no good thing. What was he talking about? That his personal flesh could not offer up to God, but the spirit can. The spirit can. We don't want to serve God in the flesh. We want to serve him while we're in the body, but it's the spirit that we want to offer up spiritual sacrifices, the Bible said, unto our Lord. Keep thine heart. Watch your heart. Why did you make that remark? Was it a kind remark or was that a offhand, unkind remark? Watch your heart. Well, Sarah laughed and said she didn't because she didn't realize that God knows the heart. She said, I didn't laugh. And the angel said, yeah, but you did. I didn't mean no harm, but the spirit life said, yeah, but you did. So we can't have offhand remarks. It'll be on the record with the Lord. We want to keep our heart with all diligence. Isaiah 16 and 7. We're not through right here, but just hold your place. That's why the Lord wants us to have a new heart. And He wants us to have a change of life, change of heart. Because we get confused working in our wisdom. What about say there? It says that be not wise. As one said in the New Testament, in your own conceits. Our own conceits means we're really smart. We know how to handle this case. Ain't nobody knowing how to handle it like I do. And then mess up. Isaiah 16, if that's it, I believe it says right here. Yes. We have heard of the pride of Moab. He is very proud. Even of his haughtiness and his pride and his wrath, but his life shall not be so. The, the uh, noticeable thing about that particular verse is that Moab was proud of his haughtiness. Now, as I've heard many times, people are proud of their simplicity. Some people are proud of their humility. And this man was proud of his haughtiness. Yeah, if that's the way I am, and so what? We don't want to be haughty. We want to be easily entreated and taken care of. Moab didn't turn out too good, amen, in the eyes of God. Proud of his haughtiness. Some people are proud. They're overbold, and they're proud of that. Some people, you can't tell them anything. They talk back to you. They, you they'll cut you off, and they're proud that they, talk, that, that they can do that. Some people don't know what to be proud of. They don't know what to be in their uh, personality. What is really right? What is that which commends them to God? Not haughtiness. Not pride. Keep thine heart with all diligence. God looketh on the heart. Man looketh on the outward appearance. When the Lord was dealing with Samuel, he was going to make a king. And he was trying to find the king. And the people were all putting forth the wrong sons. Putting forth the wrong sons. He said, God don't judge like we judge. Man, look on the outward appearance. That's why we don't commend ourselves to God looking in the mirror, putting on lipstick, eyeshadow. We don't commend ourselves to God in the uh, best uh, 
stores in town buying clothes that you can't afford. We can't commend ourselves to God with our outward appearance because God looks on the heart. You believe that? Yeah. Then we want to keep our heart dressed properly. Amen. One thing I meant to uh, have all these things, but it's another thing to have God's approval upon it. All right, we're going over here in First uh, Samuel. And hold your place because we're not through in Proverbs because that proverb is a book. Amen. It'll show you itself if you look. All right, just we'll read it in uh, 1 Samuel 16. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance. Let's read 6. And it came to pass when they had come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Don't look on his countenance or on the height of his stature because I have refused him. I have refused him. I have refused him. The Lord seeketh, seek, seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart, and I have refused him. Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shammah to pass, Shammah to pass by. And he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. And again, Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. There were some good choices there, but God didn't choose them. That's why we had to be careful not to be wise in our own conceit because see what we pick may be just the opposite of what God's looking for. Amen. We can be wise in our own conceits and God and there'll be nowhere around what we think is right in our own wisdom. How many times the church made wrong turns because we're dealing in man wisdom if Bible, God said he don't want it, then he don't want it. If it's proud, God don't want it. If it's pretentious, the Lord don't want it. Amen. If it's contrary to his word. Sometimes we feel like they were justified, amen, in saying certain things. If God said don't do it, don't do it. You can't be justified, amen, doing what God said don't do. Amen. Well, God's on my side and he knows I'm right. Uh-uh. Did you do right? It can't be right unless you have done right. Or doing, or doing right. So we have to keep our heart. Sometimes our heart hurt feelings are no more. Our hurt feelings is no more than pride. Hurt pride, being exposed maybe. And I'm going to tell you, we can get exposed sometimes from some of the most unsuspecting sources. Sometimes our children expose us. And we feel like whipping them for being disrespectful. But then you think, well, that wouldn't be right. <laughs> that wouldn't be right. The child's innocent. They just said it, but it's true. It's true. So we need to go behind the door and seek the Lord about it. For God look on the heart. We are the children of God if we have the spirit that he upholds. And he upholds a, 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 a Holy Spirit, a true spirit. A right spirit, a conscientious spirit. That'll keep the church together. That'll keep us encouraged. Right spirit. He that covereth a transgression seeketh love. But he that repeateth a matter separateth very friends. There's something we ought not be talking about. Amen. Something we ought not be talking about. Amen. If we want peace. If we want peace. If we want the Lord blessing upon us. Blessed are the peacekeepers. For theirs is but they shall be called the children of God. Peace. A good friend will cover the matter and not blab it everywhere so you can't recover. We try to deal with people so that they can recover from their errors. But one time about a thing about it, when you blab it and tell everybody and everything you can, well, the person is hindered maybe for months. And Bob did say something about now. You can't hold us that on everything because those that sin openly are, of course, to be rebuked openly. And you can't cry about that. You just ask for that. So wisdom is a principal thing, but after you get your wisdom, don't seek to be wiser than God. And how do we know when we're being wiser than God? But when we're crossing His counsel, to in His Word. We have to do it according to the wisdom of God, not in the wisdom that 
man have jig, uh, worked out. All right, now we want to go to Matthew, the sixth chapter. See what the Lord says. All right, some portion of the Sermon on the Mount. Well, let's start at 16 to get a little thought here. Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance. What's the difference between a hypocrite that's doing right and a saint that's doing right? You know the difference? Pardon? The heart. Amen. The saint has his heart in it. And the hypocrite's pretending. He's putting on a show. Moreover, when you fast, be not like the hypocrites of a sad countenance. For they disfigure their faces. They suffer openly when they're fasting. Oh, they, they, oh, they wrench their face and they hold their stomach and they walk around suffering. This is my third day, maybe. Of a sad countenance. For they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. And that's just a matter of religious pride to fast that way. Oh, Lord, help us, thank God, just to get in it, whatever we're doing. We don't blow the trumpet before us when we are helping someone. We don't want to stand up before the saints and say, well, I gave such and such as this and that. Because you make them feel bad. Amen. Don't blow the trumpet. Amen. That you got your reward. Verily, I say unto you, they have the reward. But when thou fastest, anoint your head and wash thy face. In other words, on fast day, you get up and comb your hair as per usual. Like somebody said, anoint your head. Comb it like you generally do. Don't go around looking like a hermit and uh, so be draggled and bring out the sackcloth so people know that you're fasting. Whatever you use on your hair, put it on there and comb it and put it in place and shave and Get ready to go with it and do whatever you're going to do. Yeah. Amen. Don't, but uh, uh, don't look like you're in mourning and misery when you're fasting. Anoint thine head and wash your face. That thou may not appear unto men to fast, but unto the Father which is in secret. And thy Father which is seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. All right. God will reward his saints for their fasting efforts is what we find out here if it's a genuine fast unto God and we need some more fasting unto God say amen amen, amen. amen. unto God there's still some hard cases and whatnot. but I believe some more fasting by the faithful saints will help break open some of these cases lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Now the treasures are the good and acceptable works that the saints do. Yeah. Not just works, but acceptable works. That which is by the commandment and order of God. Yeah. Amen. If you want to be a charitable and a cheerful giver, do it the way God say do it so you yeah. can receive your reward. Amen. You want to help the sick, don't do it just to be seen. Yeah. Do it because they need help. Yeah. Praise the Lord. If you want to help those that are unfortunate out of the way, do it because they need help. Not so you can be seen and have words to brag about. Yeah. All right. Lay up your treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, nor thieves break through and steal. And the 24th verse is profound. It says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And that's what we come to talk about, the heart. That a heart needs to be right with God. A heart needs to be in a situation where it does not compromise righteousness. We have those that compromise righteousness because it's not in the heart altogether to do it. It was right. Some can be bought. 
Because in the heart is a little covetousness. It's hard to fall for a, a con man, confidence man, flim flam man. You know who I'm talking about? Those people that trick you into giving you their money, promising you that you were going to get more. This is just nest. They put yours with ours and we'll share this treasure. People with a little covetousness caught, caught that way. Yeah, I know. I know, but when a con, con man comes up to work on a saint, chances are they won't get nothing. If it sounds too good to be true, chances are it is. And let me tell you this. There are too many people giving away money. If somebody's got a pile of money, let you look in their sack at their pile of money. Why would they let you look at it? You've got to figure out why is he going, willing to share it with me. Say, don't get taken by no con man. No confidence man. I know one tried that on me. I went part way with him. But it didn't add up. They didn't add up. So I thought, I'm getting out of here. I'll, I'll, I, 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 I cleared the scene quick before they could get me. There were about three of them. Yeah, one fella come up down the sidewalk. He was talking uh, like he was a foreigner. So why he talking Spanish, somewhat Spanish? Like he just hit the port. The language they was using let me know after a while. There's been people just trying to get me to give him some money. And he come down and showed me a big pile of money and said something like he was confused about what to do. And he was trying to get some directions from me with this big pile of money in his hand. I said, man, you want me carrying that money around in the public like that? But he was doing that deliberately. He wanted me to see he had some money. And if I fix up so I can get some of it. The other fellow come up and tried to, in, in a, tried to uh, uh, intervene there to find out, see maybe he could help some. And he began talking too. He had a line. And he was working with the, this guy that seemed so pitiful. And he took the money and pushed it like way back like that and tried to work with it. And they tried to get this all to go and show him something up on Center Street and talk about Bishop Green or somebody up there that's going to help him out. And he's supposed to be up there at Bishop Green's more. I know there ain't no Bishop Green up on Center Street. <laughs> I have no son. And they were talking about seaports and things. They must have been from the coast or something, talking about the, uh, how he had just gotten in and hadn't been in long. I know there's no seaports in Springfield. <laughs> well, they were trying to work that this was a, he was a. A man just got into the country and he was confused and he was going to come up and help him. And so uh, I was willing to help him, of course. But that wasn't what they was getting at. Then they wanted me to show for confidence, since this man had money, for confidence, make sure I was worthy to show him some money if I had any money. Well, I was on the way to the bank. I didn't have much money yet. So I had a dollar. <laughs> when I opened my wallet, showed my dollar to it. Try to see what I had. Well, I thought I took off. I didn't want none of their money. The poor fellow, if he was, if he was really hurt, I wouldn't want his money. And if he wasn't hurt, let me get away from here before they pull, pull a piss or do something else. Confidence, folks. They're out there. I've read about many of them, pigeon drops and different things that I've heard in the paper about how they get folks to take money out of the bank and, and go with them. All right. But I said, I didn't want to just now. I didn't want that man money. So that, that was no attraction for me to go any further with him when I found out what they was up to, uh, that the man really didn't need help, that they were trying to help me out of my treasure my finances they want to do that and uh, I, I the experience was interesting to not read about it but to have but if it had been a cop around I told them get these guys out of town before they really get somebody and hurt them but they were in they were out of their proper community and they didn't know about Springfield and so doubt no doubt they were planning to uh, knock off a few and then leave town and not leave a trail behind them but I read about all that stuff, about the big pile of money, and then they go back to look in the sack, just news, roll of newspapers and things like that. You all read about the confidence games? You know about it? Take heed. If you get rid of covetousness, the, the, the uh, confidence men will have a hard time trying to get you. Trying to get you. The whole thought is that people see that pile of money and they want it. Yeah. And they want to cut it. So they go into the bank and get it cut out, and, uh, out of the bank and to give this guy, to show him that you're in goodwill, that you're willing to go with him, and they tell you to pick up a couple of 300 because here's four or five thousand here and you get it out and give it to them don't do it because you'll be ashamed to tell it if they get your money so Lord help us not to get our money I don't want nobody's money but mine and I'll share it with you if you're worthy amen, amen. for where your treasure is there will your heart be also now we want to put this man's heart in the sack where the money was 
They want to get my heart involved in where this man's uh, money just coming to the country. He had all this money. He went to try to get established here, and he didn't know what to do. And he wants somebody to help him. So this other fellow come down, and he was going to help him if I get in on it. He was going to help him out of his money. And the little innocent fellow there talking with this accent, he was going to fall victim to this buddy that came down here pretending that he didn't know him. And so this uh, fellow coming to meet him was going to, if I would go along with it, share with me this young man's money. So he was going to take him up to what's his name, the biggest place, and he was going to go around the back. And while he was waiting, going around to get Bishop to come around, he was supposed to have my money. And he went around the back and never came back. But I didn't want to. I always say that because uh, there are men around, and some of us have met them, that do things like that. Don't give them your money. Watch the, keep thine heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And we don't want covetousness in our heart. I mean, we don't want to rob anybody, and we don't want anybody to rob us. But I'd rather be robbed than rob somebody. So the Lord help us, praise God, because I can recover from the robbery, but it's going to be hard to recover from theft. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore then I be single, I mean, you can't be holy and wicked at the same time. I mean, you can't walk the straight path and be crooked at the same time. If your eye be single, you can't be honest and crooked at the same time. Not out of the same heart should proceed bitter water and sweet. Out of the heart, you call me a name, it might have come out of your heart. If it wasn't a good name. Well, I just uh, get mad sometimes. Yeah, but why you call me that? Why you say that? Don't you know when you get angry, if you get angry, the, your tongue should still be under control? And then it should come out of your heart that's not in there? If your eye be single, be a saint. Don't be a saint and something else at the same time. If you could, you can't. That makes hypocrite. The whole body shall be full of light. The Lord looketh for on the heart. Who can say I've made my heart pure? I say, can't anybody say I've made my heart pure? But with the help of God, we can make it pure. If we cooperate, God can make it pure. Amen. If we ask God, if we seek God, He's a heart purifier. He can keep our motives right. That's what really counts. That's what's in the heart. Why are we doing what we're doing? We want that motive to be right. All right. We don't want to gain by crooked motives. Amen. Amen. We don't want to do right with a crooked motive either. We want to do right with the right motive. Amen. 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 I don't want to give, give you a kiss. Maybe I should. Maybe I come on and give you a hug. Maybe I should give you a handshake. Maybe I should loan you five with the right motive. Out of the heart are the issues of life. One of my failures because our motives weren't right and God didn't bless us for it. We have that scripture in 13 chapter 1 Corinthians. Let us know that if our motives are not right and an issue for, and come forth from a heart of love, then God don't accept it. Is that right? You remember? He was telling all those good things we can do. But our motives are not right. So he said, it profit us nothing. The heart not right. Give my body to be burned even. Give to the sick. Give to the poor. I mean, whatever. If a motives are not right, God don't have to accept it. For if there come, this is James uh, 2 and 2. Well, let's read one. My brethren, have not the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect to persons. For if there come in your assembly a man of God, a, a man with a gold ring. <laughs> now watch our heart and our motives. If they come into the church, a man with a gold ring, now he's going to miss us with a gold ring. We didn't catch him too. And goodly apparel, he might catch us that way. And we can paraphrase or rephrase these statements to make them pertain to our day. If a man pull up in a Cadillac, Mercedes? Oh, he's bound to get you, huh? Because 
or a Chrysler, a new one. And when they come in here, they say, with a sharp shoot. The fault here, you know, is to speak of a man who is impressive that he has some means. If they come in your assembly, a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and also they come in a poor man in vile raiment, here comes a man walking. And you have respect to him that weareth gay losing, and say to him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, sit under my footstool. Why would we do that? Are you not then partial in yourselves? And are become the judges of evil thoughts? Now what evil thoughts will cause us to do something like that? Well, if a man come in, in those days the gold was, uh, was in these days a sign of wealth, and here's a man coming in and have nothing. And without regarding the gospel that they come to hear or their need of spiritual help, we put one on a fine seat and put the other one back with a coat rack and nothing else to judge by but the gold ring and them plain clothes. He said, you become a judge of evil thoughts. Now he said, well, watch your heart. We become somehow or another Weighing out by what maybe we may be profited by the man with the gold ring. What personally might we gain from that man? If he's a man of means, maybe we can get some means somehow. He may be a man of influence that can help us somehow. He may be a man who is skilled uh, that has brought his riches somehow. We give him a good place not wanting to offend him thinking maybe by what we may be profited by him. When we uh, might need his influence, we want him to think well of us. But here comes a man here, obviously don't have nothing to contribute. So why bother? We say, you don't be partial. And you're partial. And without thinking, maybe, we may do this and someone ask. Now, would you mind taking some time to explain to me why you brought that man down front and said, the old man, don't come down front. Well, um, it just happened that way, I don't know. Well, there's plenty of seats down front, why don't you bring both up? There's a few in the back, why don't you send them both back there? Well, I don't know. See, you have respect to them, they wear gay clothing. Now, you got to watch out, we don't use that gay in the old sense, but modern, we use it in lively bright clothing and say unto him sit here in a good place what shall I dishonor this man why why do you want to honor him well I'm just speaking along the line of what James was saying that if there come a man in your assembly he's the one who posed the question I didn't he gave the statement here said that you'll be if you don't watch out you'll be partial in yourselves and become judges of evil thoughts you're weighing thoughts in your mind the difference between these two men is not their spiritual worth at all, but their financial, apparently their financial situation. Now when you come to hear the gospel, I think we, we, a rich man need to hear it too. And poor man need to hear it. He said, Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them that love him. But you have despised the poor. Watch out. Why despise the poor and love the rich? Huh? Why should we despise the poor and love the rich? Why would that be significant of anything? By what we may be profited, I suppose. By their influence that they may have, hold somewhere, I suppose. You figured out it didn't say right here. 
But why are we honoring the rich and not knowing where the riches come from even? He said, hearken. Have not God chose the poor of this rich world, rich in faith? Yeah, he have. But you have despised the poor because they're poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seat, sue you, take your land away from it? Do not they blaspheme the worthy name by which you were called? So why do you honor them without respect to their spiritual situation? If you reform, re, uh, fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as you do yourself. You do well. But if you have respect to persons, you commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. All right. How about our hearts? It'd be easy to get into something like that. And I might go a little farther on this and saying I don't think that he's talking about a, a raggedy individual who establishedly is not um, in all way prayer, prepared to be in company unless he is something matter with his head. But even those we help them. If there's any way that they can get some spiritual help to whoever we help them. I realize there could be a man coming to the assembly that's beyond that should not really be in the assembly because of his vile condition but that's not what he's teaching here. He's just talking about a man who's poor. He's not talking about a man whose clothes are ripped and he's in, uh, uh, his odor is beyond continence. He's not talking about one who's immodestly dressed. He's talking about just a poor man whose clothes aren't very good. Because he went on to tell us what he's talking about. That's the poor man. He's about the, and even the saints. It may be a saint. For he said here, he draw, you despise the poor and rich man oppress you. Have not God chosen the poor of the world rich in faith so he's talking about someone who doesn't have much means but you didn't judge him because he's rich or poor or you didn't judge him because he amen is rich in faith but you judge him because he was poor in apparel all right so why he said are you partially so James trying to take, get him to take an inward look it's common among us to pick the big shots and set them on high we like to see the big shots come into the assembly, but you're wasting your time, and when they come in, chances are the Bible says there are not many noble. I mean, not many wise. Most of the time it's the poor that have the gospel preached unto them and those that accept. The rich are not, he said, how, 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 how hardly shall a rich man enter into the kingdom? He said, they're the ones that blaspheme the royal name. They don't need much. A poor man needs prayer, he needs access to hell. The poor of the world accept help from God. But he said, you're a judge of uh, evil thoughts. Now you come up with whatever you want on these things, but we don't want to be a judge of evil thoughts when folks come in the congregation. We have to be careful about how we respond to a pretty girl. Huh? Amen. Watch out now. Amen. Here's one made a little bit plain here, and here comes one that says, she's striking in her beauty. Just preach the gospel, that's all. Let's see how our heart looks. Handsome men. Let him open the door for me. I want that fellow open the door for me. Oh, hey, you stand. Here comes Prince Charming. Uh-uh. I'll be partial. Hey, Amen. Why you want this? I don't want this plain girl sitting beside you. Why what? You may be profited by her. No, we saved now. We ain't making no hits on nobody like you used to. You understand what Paul is talking about? James is trying to get the people to see sometimes what motivates them to act. And it's not always an act of charity that is being performed. A lot of times we'll give someone a ride who has a car. But somebody's always looking for a ride, you don't give them a ride. Let them find a way they own. Let the pastor find them a ride. Let them go to the church van. They don't have nothing to repay. So I said, you go out and invite someone to dinner, you pick the poor and those that can't repay. Don't get your heart all messed up in this situation. All right. 
I got a car. Unless somebody ride with me that's got a car. And we come time to switch off, they can ride me somewhere. I can ride with them, but she ain't got nothing. She's always wanting to ride somewhere. Well, the Bible said those are the ones you want to have. Those that need it, he said you pick the poor. Yeah, amen. amen. Those that cannot repay, those that really appreciate that meal that you invited them to. You invite someone over to the meal could just as soon go down to the hotel and get them a, a fifteen twenty dollar meal. Some of the meals cost more than that. They can get it. But here's somebody who's been scraping together with a few bones and some potatoes. And they can stand a nice meal. And you don't give it to them. He said, be careful now. Watch your heart. Why do you do that? Why, do you, why are your friends the ones that they are? Is it all together because of their wisdom and spiritual condition? Or do you choose for some other reason? But you have despised the poor. You have despised the poor. James, that's not right. And the rich blaspheme the name. They make fun of you. If you see you praying. Where your treasure is, there's where your heart is. Quite often that betrays our motives. When we see our heart working, that betrays where your treasure is. But Taylor was speaking this one time and he was telling us on this scripture and he was talking about trying to go fishing. Some of y'all remember that. Trying to go fishing and they had a, what, $100 in the truck. I think it's what it was. Trying to hide it, put it under the floorboard, under the car, mat, and whatever. He wanted to fish, but he didn't want to take it out there. He had his hip boots on, didn't want to go out in that water with that money. So he'd drop it in that money, in that water, and then he'd be a loser. So he tried to fish, he was trying to throw his reel and catch it in the tree, trying to watch the truck. Lose his bait, ever trying to watch that truck, couldn't catch nothing. Looking at the truck, he said he finally decided he couldn't catch no fish watching that truck, so he got in the truck and went on. Because his treasure was there, and he said he couldn't fish. Without the, 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 because his money was in that truck. And so it is, we can't make it to heaven sometime when our treasure is somewhere else. Amen. What we really treasure and esteem, if it's not heaven, watch out. Because eventually we're going to be drawn away from the straight and the narrow, following after what we really want. What we really want, we're going to get our attention if it's not heaven. If we want esteem, amen, if we want to be head, amen, we want to be movie star, we want to be like Marilyn and Monroe, or we want to be like, uh, I don't know all these, uh, who that, the rich guy. Oh, who, Michael Jackson. That'd be hard. Payroll, that's what I'm trying to think about. Payroll. He got money. He got money. He didn't mean how to run a campaign. Funner. He had his own money. Thank God, whatever you want to be. Thank God. If you want to be anything, now you put your own thing there that keep you from serving the Lord. And he says, uh, for where your treasure is, where your heart is, that's where your treasure is. And where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. People yeah. say, well, this is not my treasure, and they'll fight and almost backslide, amen, to enjoy it. You can just about believe their treasure. Some have already left and gone off somewhere, having established a treasure somewhere else. Finally admit, some people backslide, and they, for you, especially the, the sisters, and they be, be in britches in two days or less. And you know what was on the heart before they did. They didn't matter if they just got discouraged, they just wanted something else. Sometimes a guy just wants a chance to smoke again. So he's smoking. A week after you see him backslid, you look him out there smoking. Didn't even get a chance to smoke to get on him anymore. Uh uh. Where the treasure is. Lord God will behave ourselves if our treasures are laid in heaven. Christ said, Lay your treasure up in heaven. Amen. Amen. Lay your treasure up in heaven so troubles won't drive you away. Amen. Where disappointments won't drive you away. 
Amen. Lay your treasure up in heaven. Thank God where? Amen. It'll be there when you get ready for it because the moth can't bother. Nobody's going to steal it. And Brother Taylor talking about somebody coming along in his truck and get his money. Well, if it wasn't in the truck, it should be laid up in heaven and the thief can't get it. Amen. In our prayers, those are our treasures. Lay them up. Our hopes and our aspirations for today and tomorrow. Over in glory. We keep sending up acceptable gifts unto God. Sacrifices unto God. Because that's where we want to go. We want God to hold him. He says he's able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Our treasures are passed up. James. Amen for where your treasure is. There will your heart be also. We behave because of what is in our, the way we are dictated by the condition of our heart. Amen. We're kind because our heart is that way. We're loving because we, God has given us a loving heart. Amen. We deal with the saints, even that brother may be of low degree. Thank God we don't ignore them because that's not where our heart is. And the young one, thank God we try to help them out. We don't greet just our friends because that's not the way our heart is. Amen. We try to encourage that one that nobody speaks much to. Sometimes we'll go and sit down beside someone and Ask them how they're feeling, and uh, maybe they're not a good conversationalist, or maybe they don't have uh, anything to offer you. How many times we go through a whole year, and there's certain people we have never tried to encourage, we never spoke to them at all, because our heart don't care for that. That's not in our heart. We just don't bother. I, I, I'm not that way. Some people say, "Well, I, don't brag about it." Amen. You tell the saints when you're in the back, go come up front sometime. The saints are up here. And if you're always in the front, don't go outside. Don't go back sometime. And greet the saints. They're all on a journey. Thank God sometimes it gets difficult. Sometimes the enemy puts all the most insurmountable obstacles of mind before you. And sometimes we need to be distracted from that and somebody needs to let you know that we still love you and we care about you. Appreciate your company over in heaven. Amen. What kind of heart do we have? Out of the heart. That's why God operates His church. Out of the spirit and the heart. Right heart. Right spirit. Right behavior. Right everything. Right attitudes. With the right heart. God bless us to have just that. And then we can't lightly misuse or mistrust, misdo anybody. Lord help us. Thank God. Amen. Things we tell, let's tell it for the right reason. Even our exhortations, let it be for the right reason. Amen. Amen. If you want to go tell on somebody, let it be for reasons of edification, not the reasons of gossip. What you wear to church, let it be suitable. Amen. For worship. Not to let somebody see, I got a new outfit. And it's it's astounding outfit. This outfit, this outfit is something else. I tell you, I got close to the borders I could on this. All right. That is all our motives. About us. So want our motives to be right. Amen. We don't dress to be seen and to be loved. That's why plain dress is fine for the saints. But some people always want to press beyond the plainness because they have some other motive. And if they could express it like they want to, Queen of Sheba would have to know us. We'd really be looking good. But Lord help us, our motive is not to look good, but to be decent, presentable, and modest. Lay your treasures up in heaven. God appreciate that. Ornament of quiet and a meek spirit, which is in the sight of the Lord, a great price. Amen. Out of the heart, out of the issues of life. God bless you. Amen. That's all the saints, praise God. What is that number? Two twenty nine, two forty nine. That furnace just keeps running over there. What happened? Oh Lord, help us! <laughs> what did it say? Seven six and two. Yeah, well, I think it's in the shadows up in you cannot see it. The indicators. It's the, it's the
still running. Oh. Well, Lord, yes. Yeah.